Hello, and welcome to Melissa's signature assignment for Professor Drexler's 1250 class. I'm Blake, your narrator, and that right hand there is Melissa, and together we will take you on a magical journey of a single fallacy. Have you ever explained something using a previous event as reason? I mean, we do it all the time. It's wet outside because it was raining. I'm hungry because I skipped breakfast. This is a simple explanation of A caused B because A came before B. But did you know that you could be committing a terrible, heinous fallacy? Post hoc ergo propter hoc. I know, sounds fatal. But no, you don't need to go to the doctors, and no, you don't have to finalize your will. Post hoc ergo propter hoc is Latin for after this, therefore because of this. If you think saying post hoc ergo propter hoc is difficult, try saying it in pig Latin. Be grateful. In simplified English, or some would say American, this happened before that, so this caused that. But what does this look like in real life? Here are some real life examples that would help you understand post hoc ergo propter hoc. Kirsten wore her purple sweater yesterday. It's raining today. Kirsten wore her sweater before the rain, so the sweater is the cause of the rain. Here's another example. Brayden went to see the new Star Wars movie, and an hour later, Brayden took his physics test and passed. So, watching Star Wars will help Brayden pass all of his upcoming physics tests. Let's try another example. Every time Ben turns off the TV, dances, and turns his TV back on, the TV remote works again. Clearly, Ben's little dance routine is the only reason the remote is working. Next example. Lori got a paper cut, and the next day her flu went away. Paper cuts obviously cure the flu then. Last example. John forgot to tie his right shoe at 8 a.m. in Utah. One minute later, there was a tornado in Nebraska. Naturally, we arrest John because he's the reason the tornado happened. Now before you form an angry mob and ransack John's home, think about your reasoning. Could wearing a purple sweater really cause rain? Can watching Star Wars help you pass your physics test? Can a spiffy dance routine make your remote work? Can a paper cut cure the flu? Can an untied shoe in Utah cause global damage in Nebraska? No. <laughs> Many problems arise when dealing with post hoc ergo propter hoc. The most common one is jumping to conclusions. Victims of post hoc ergo propter hoc are usually not careful enough when they reason. Leaping to a causal conclusion is quicker and simpler than actually doing the work of figuring out what could actually be the cause. Investigating the problem is not popular. With the leaps most post hoc ergo propter hoc victims do, they tend to land far from the truth. The only exercise post hoc ergo propter hoc victims do is jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Thank you. Another problem caused by post hoc ergo propter hoc is superstition. Now, every time Brayden has a physics test, he's going to watch Star Wars because he knows that if he doesn't, he will fail. Just because a minute after you break your mirror, you find your pet fish dead, doesn't mean the death of Goldie was caused by that broken mirror. Most likely, the death of your goldfish was due to the fact you forgot to clean his bowl for the past month. It was just a coincidence a mirror broke before Goldie died. We need to remember that coincidences do happen. Because you got a paper cut before your flu went away, does not mean you found the cure for the flu. It just means you have post hoc ergo propter hoc syndrome. All it really was, was a coincidence. How do we avoid becoming a victim of post hoc ergo propter hoc? Put on your Sherlock hat and do some careful investigation. Could John's untied shoes really cause the tornado? Or maybe it was the weather. Remember, Correlation does not mean causation. If it correlates, you must have evidence to prove its causation. So if you ever find yourself about to make a claim by leaping, 
consider how far away you'll land from the truth.